Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm going to show you a plugin that I've been playing around with today that will allow you to style video or audio tags in HTML kind of uh, based on their current state or uh, the ability to test certain properties about them. So here I've got a video tag where I've just put in uh, the most recent uploaded video that I added to my server. I've added the controls attributes so that we'll be able to pause, play, mute, um, do all those good things to the video. And then the only other thing I have in my document right here where I'm working is this script tag. Now this is a JavaScript module and you'll notice that my editor doesn't even have syntax highlighting for JavaScript modules inside HTML. So I'm going to switch this entire document over to JavaScript syntax highlighting and we're just going to ignore everything outside of it. The first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to import JS in CSS from NPM. And here, because we're doing development and the time it takes to load doesn't really matter, I'm going to go ahead and load it live over HTTPS from a server. But if you're going to develop this and put it into production yourself, you'd probably want to download this module and put it beside your uh, this other module that we're writing and serve them both together or bundle them. So in here, uh, there's a few different parts. We have the function that I've been working on. We have our JS and CSS virtual style sheet. And then we have some custom event listeners that we've added that will help us um, reprocess this virtual style sheet when the time is right. So I'm going to go through each of them one by one. We'll look at what they do, and then we'll uh, extend it a little bit and see what's possible. So uh, in this JS and CSS plugin, we've named it video and we give it three things. We give it a selector, a CSS selector to look in the document for tags that match. We're giving it options, which will be as many different properties as we want, and we'll either supply a value or a function to test, and a CSS rule for the matching elements. So what's gonna happen ultimately by the end of this is we're gonna look for tags in the document, test each of the options, and if it passes, we're gonna apply a CSS rule only to the, the passing elements, the ones that successfully pass all the tests. So how do we do this? The first thing that we do is we go through the document and we find all tags matching the selector that we gave to the plugin. For each of the tags, we're going to do this same logic. And what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with the CSS styles that we need as a string. So inside of the logic for each tag, we're going to create a custom attribute because we're either going to need to set or remove a value based on this custom attribute. And the attribute itself is a combination of the selector and all of the keys from our options object with all the funny characters removed. Now for each element, we're going to test all of the keys in our options object and make sure that every single one is true. If they are true, we'll be doing this bit of code. Otherwise, we'll be doing this bit of code. So the two different types of things that we can supply to this uh, plugin as a test are either a function or just a value. So here we test if the uh, option that we're testing is a function then we are going to run it like a function. And what we're going to do is we're going to supply the tags state into that function. Otherwise, we're only comparing the tag state to the option state. In either case, if our test is true, if the value is equal, or if the function returns true, we will be setting a custom attribute on our matching element. We'll be adding a count of how many passing elements that we've seen. And then with a combination of this custom attribute and the count, we can target these passing elements individually. And then we output a CSS rule virtually untouched uh, from what was given to the plugin. We increase the count and then we continue processing tags. If a matching tag fails this test and returns false, we take the same custom identifier and we remove the count. So no output rules are going to possibly apply to this element. The last thing we do is we return the generated styles 
and we end up with that as our string in our virtual style sheet. So here we are, here is a test virtual style sheet. The first thing I've done is made the video 50% wide, and then I've done three of these plugin calls already. So the first plugin call going to our video JS and CSS plugin uh, looks for all video tags in the document. These are the supplied options. And then here we have the CSS rule that we want to apply to passing elements. So for all video tags in the document, if the state paused is false and the state ended is false, the border will be lime. So think if it's not paused and it's not ended, that sounds an awful lot like it is playing. So when the video plays, we should see lime. Now the second plugin call that I've written here in our virtual style sheet is again for the same video tag, but this time it says if paused is true, uh, make the border hot pink. So lime when it's playing, hot pink when it's paused, and then another property I'm testing here is for all video tags in the document, if it's muted, change the opacity to 0.7. So let's go ahead and test that. I'll explain the rest of this code below, and then we'll add a new uh, plugin call in here that does something a little bit different. So over here in our document, we have our video. It is hot pink because paused is true right now. If I play it, you see it goes to lime green. If I pause it, it goes back to hot pink. If I play it, it goes to lime green again. This is because these rules are alternately applying depending on the state of the video. Now, I'm going to test this last one if it's muted. So you'll notice it doesn't matter whether it's playing or not. If it's muted, it stays in that state. Now, muted here is a true false. We could also write a function that had a different cutoff at a certain volume level. Maybe we could change it depending on the volume level. Um, so there's a lot of different properties that you can test with media elements, with a video tag or an audio tag that you could use for styling um, rather than uh, trying to use some kind of a player that might have some of these things built in. You can just use JavaScript to test these directly. So how is this working? Our virtual style sheet being run with JS and CSS is looking at the window object and it has registered all of these events that will reprocess the style sheet. So on window load, it will come up with a value for each of these uh, plugin calls. On window resize, it'll do the same thing. On click, it'll do that. And then this is a custom event that we're going to define below called reprocess. So what that lets us do is anytime our JavaScript code triggers the reprocess event, this virtual style sheet will be recompiled and populated out to the page. So what I've done here is I have looked through all the video tags in the entire document, and for each tag, I'm going to create a new event called reprocess, and I'm going to add an event listener to that tag on both the play and the pause events that dispatch this custom reprocess event. Now this means that when window intercepts this, this is going to be repopulated. So one thing that we don't have is we don't have some kind of a playing or playback or any kind of a constant um, event that fires when a video tag is playing. So you could do that. You could uh, add to this event in here to say, you know, when it's played, change a flag that says video playing, and when it's paused, set that to false, and then just have uh, a constantly running loop that when that flag is true, re sends this reprocess event, and when it's false, stop sending it. But that's something that you'd have to do yourself. That's not something that's built in. So before I do that, I'm just going to write one more. And this is again for the video elements. And this time I'm going to say current time, and we're going to use a function. So I'm going to say n for a number. So if the current time is greater than 3, whatever this rule is, is going to apply to our video tag. So let's say box shadow 10px 10px 0. So that's going to be 
shifted by 10 pixels to the right, down, and with no spread or blur. So back over to here, you'll notice that because there's no constantly playing thing, we have to wait for another thing like a click on the document. I forgot magenta. So it doesn't know when it's over three, but the net, the very next event that happens that is over three, um, we can see that it is working. So let's check this out. So I'm just going to do a function that loops forever, reprocesses it, and see if this fixes it. So now when 3 happens, it should get it automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and add the flag like I talked about. So we're going to say let video playing equal false. Here we're going to say video plane equals true. And then we're going to set it to false here. So the last thing we need to do in here is just say if video playing it'll send that event so now it's not firing all the time but only when the video will be playing so that's how you can use a little bit of JavaScript to style video or audio elements based on either readable properties or even by testing the values of those properties with functions in order to apply styles to them using some very simple abstractions with JavaScript and CSS.